Hello everyone, welcome to LRDI Prep. My name is Samir Sardana and in this video we are going to discuss games and tournament based set uh, the coin picking related problems, coin picking or matchstick related problems. Uh, what are these kind of set? Let's have a look at the instructions and you'll get to know what are the kind of questions we are going to solve and we will be discussing all possible cases related to this uh, uh, types that is coin picking related problems. On LRDI prep you will get your 100% error and DA syllabus coverage at LRDI prep YouTube channel. So the complete syllabus of logical reasoning and data interpretation will be uploaded on this YouTube channel. So follow the channel. So here is a set that we will be discussing. This is coin picking and mass tech related problems. These are the standard instructions that you will be getting in coins and mass tech problems. Two smart players A and B are playing a coin game in which they can pick one, two, three or four coins. So what are the number of coins a particular person can pick will always be mentioned in the instruction part. They have 83 coins and the players who picks the last coin will lose the game. Now, this is one of the type of this set where it is mentioned the person who is picking the last coin is going to lose the game. So therefore I have mentioned it as case one and the case one are those kind of questions where the players who picks the last coin will lose. I'll first uh, discuss the complete conceptual approach of solving the question. Then I'll also tell you the shortcut method of solving this question. Okay. A and B plays alternatively and A will play the first move. How many coins should A pick at first? So his win is independent of the number of coins that B picks in his first move. So the question is, the number of coins on the table are 83. A ko kitne coins first move mein pick karne chahiye so that ultimately B is left to pick one coin in his last turn and B lose the game, right? Because the person who is picking the last coin is losing the game. So what should be the number of coins that A should pick in his first move so that whatever number of coins that B pick, the win of A is completely independent of the number of coins that B is picking. So we have to assure the win for A and we, and that has to be decided by his first move and we are supposed to tell in first move what will be the number of coins that A pick. Now there is a concept of controlling factor that means if A's win is independent of B's number of coins picking that means A is controlling the game at, in his all moves right. So whatever number of moves that A is, take, a is uh, uh, taking the win of A is completely independent of B's uh, number of coins picking. So that means A is controlling the game in every move. So what will we do? We'll start from the last. There's two things that you need to take care. What are the number of coins, right? The number of coins that is placed on, that are, that, that are left on table for A to pick, right? So there are two things that we need to take care. Number of coins left, for A to pick, for A to pick okay. and then the second is the number of coins, number of coins left for, number of coins left for B to pick. There are two things right and if A wants to control the complete game, if A wants to control the complete game, A need to make sure that in his last turn, right, in the last turn, B is left to pick one coin, right? That means in the last turn of the game, the number of coins left for B to pick should be one because in that case, B will not have any option but to pick this last coin and B is going to lose the game because the person picking the last coin is losing the game. So A have to make sure that B is left with one coin in his last move, right? Now, if A want to leave one coin on the table, then tell me what are the number of coins that A should get? What are all possible cases of the number of coins that should be placed, that, sh that should be left on the table for A to pick? See, A can pick one, two, three or four coins. Whatever number of coins that A pick, finally on the table, the number of coins left should be one for B. So, if A is picking one coin, let's say, 
after picking one coin a want to leave one coin for b that means the number of coins should be the number of coins placed on the table should be equal to 2 okay what if a is picking two number of coins if a is picking two coins and a want to leave one coin for b then a will be then a should have three coins on the table what if a is picking three coins and a want to leave one coin for b then a should have four coins on the table what if a is picking four coins and want to leave one coin for b that means a should have five coins on the table if a in if in the last turn a is getting any of these coins then a can manipulate his game and pick the coins accordingly so that he leave one coin for b let's say if the number of coins placed on the table are two then a will pick one and one coin will be left for b and b has to pick that coin and b will lose the game if a picks three coins if, if three coins are placed a will pick two and left one coin for b so this is a controlling factor right you see that if a is getting any of these coins then a can manipulate right his game and will ask b to uh, pick the last coin okay now before this turn b will be b will be picking some number of coins now what should be the number of coins that should be placed on the table for b so that whatever number of coins that b pick a should be getting any of these number because if a is getting any of these number then he will make sure that b will lose the game now you tell me if a b pick one coin the number of coins left for a should be 5 that is that means the number of coins placed on the table for b should be 6 because if the number of coins placed on b are 6 if b pick one coin then a will have uh, 5 coins on the table and will be able to manipulate the game if b pick two coins then 6 minus 2 4 then b will get four coins and then still will be able to manage the game if b picks three coins 6 minus 3 then a will have three coins right and will be able to manage the game if b picks four coins out of six then b will be a will be left with two coins and will be able to manage the game right so if the number of coins placed on the table are six whatever number of coins that b is picking a will have any of these coins and will be able to manipulate the game to win the game right so now you see that if six coins are there placed on the table for b then what should be the value over here you see that if a is picking one coin and leaving six for b that the number of coins left on the table are seven if a is picking two coins and want to leave six for it that means number of coins placed on the table should be eight if a is picking three coins right if a is picking three coins and should be leaving six coins for b that means the number of coins placed on the table should be 9 and so on 10. So see that this will go in this way. So this is 1, this is 6. Now 10 is the last coin here. So the number of coins placed for B here should be 11. And then, and then you see that here the number of coins left for A would be exactly in the similar fashion, right? So in, in a similar way, like 12, uh, it would be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 12, 13, 14 and 15. You see that? If any of these coins are placed on the table, B pick, A picking 1 coins will leave 11 coins for B. A picking 2 coins out of 13 will leave 11 coins for B. A picking 3 coins out of 14 will leave 11 coins for B. A picking 4 coins out of 15 will leave 11 coins for B. So you see that this is the controlling factor for A and this is what you need to look at carefully. This complete line, you see that this is the controlling factor for A. Controlling factor for A. You see that this, this series of number of coins which are left on the table for B is following a fixed pattern, right? What is this series? You see that 1 plus 6, 5, 1 plus 5, 6, 6 plus 5, 11. And the next number you can predict using the same series method, it will be 11 plus 5, 16, right? So what A is trying to do, A is trying to leave these numbers which follow the, which are at a difference of 5. And you can carefully observe all these numbers are at a difference of 5 and of the form of 5k plus 1. You see that? All these numbers are of the 5k plus 1. 5 into 0 plus 1, 5 into 1 plus 1, 5 into 2 plus 1, 5 into 3 plus 1. So the controlling factor for A here is to leave 5k plus 1 coins, uh, the numbers of the form of 5k plus 1, right? A is trying to leave that number of coins, this 
in uh, the number of number of coins which follow which are of the form of 5k plus 1 a is trying to leave that number of coins on the table for b if a continue to do continue to do so a is definitely going to manipulate the game in his last hand and will be able to win the game so therefore this is the direct method of solving the question that you need to see what is this series pattern and this will tell you what what are the forms of the number now tell me if 83 coins are placed on the table initially if 83 coins are placed on the table initially and a has to win the game a has to win the game then what should be the number of coins that a should pick so that after picking the coins a leaves a number which is on the form of 5k plus 1 for b now tell me what is the number which on being divided by 5 give you a remainder of 1 and it's less than 83. We know that that number is 81. 5k plus 1 form number less than 83 is 81. That means in his first move, A want to leave 81 coins for B. Now if 83 coins are placed on the table and A is taking his first move and A want to leave 81 coins for B, then what should be the number of coins that A should pick? A should pick 2 coins and he is definitely going to win the game. Right. So the answer to the question is two coins. So do you need to follow this approach in every question? If you forget the direct trick of this, then you'll have to follow it. Otherwise, the direct method of solving this question is and this but this method will only be applicable in those cases where players who picks the last coin will lose the game. In that case, the controlling factor for A can directly be find out by using this concept and that concept is minima into minima plus maxima minima plus maxima right that is minimum number of coins that a player can pick plus maximum number of coins that a person can pick into k plus minimum number of coins now if you can keep this in mind this will straight away give you the di direct controlling factor for a minimum number of coins are one maximum number of coins that a person can pick is 4 into k plus the minimum number of coins that a can pick is 1 and he can pick any any person can pick is 1 so the controlling factor for a would be 5k plus 1 so this controlling factor which we were trying to find out by taking different cases by you know by uh, assuming the last coins to be 1 and then finding the number of coins for a to left can straight away be find out if you can keep this in mind the direct method of finding the controlling factor for A where person picking the last coin is losing the game. Where the person picking the last coin is losing the game, the direct controlling factor is minima plus maxima into k plus minima. So minimum number of coins 1, maximum number of coins is 4, it's mentioned the directions into k plus 1, 5k plus 1 form. So give me a number, that means this is, this is the number of coins that A want to leave for B on the table in every possible turn. So now if A is taking his first move and A want to leave 5k plus 1 coins, now look for the number which is near to 83 and of the form of 5k plus 1, this that number would be 81. You see that 5k plus 1 number is of 81. So if A want to leave 81 coins on the table, out of 83 he will pick 2 coins so that B will get 81 and then A will keep on manipulating the complete game. And then finally he will win the game and he'll leave one coin for B to pick, right? So this is a direct method of solving this question, right? Minima plus maxima into K plus minima. Right? Let me give you one more example to uh, answer this question. For example, here you see that now one, two, three, four coins are there, but the total number of coins has been changed from 83 to 84. Every every other information is exactly similar. Now, in this case, if I want to answer, you see that I can get directly give the answer. My controlling factor will be minima plus maximum number of coins into k plus minimum number of coins. What is minimum number of coins? 1. What is the maximum number of coins? 4 into k plus 1. So the controlling factor for a is 5k plus 1. Now give me a number which is of the form of 5k plus 1 but less than 84. That number is 81. We have already seen that. Right. So if 84 coins are placed on the table and A want to leave 81 coins for B, then what should be the number of coins that A should pick in his first move? 3. So therefore the answer to this question will straight away be 3, right? This is the method of solving these questions, right? We'll be discussing more question on this, right? Uh, I hope you got the concept.
Now there are different cases. In the second case, I'll be discussing where the person who is picking the last coin is going to win the game. In that case, what we will, what what will be the controlling factor? Uh, what will be the direct way of solving that question? We'll be discussing that in the next part of the video. And there's still more question to do. And let me give you some more question to practice. Here is question number three that I want you to try. Right? Uh, what is the number of coins? Are hundred and three? Right? One thousand five coins. 70 but in this case the minimum number of coins has been changed right you can pick either two three or four coins so try all these six questions i'll be giving you the answer of these four questions in the next video and then i will discuss the next case there are some changes there are some cases that we need to discuss in question number three four and five also three four five and six also but once you once you do these four questions then we'll go to the second case right thank you so much for watching this video and please subscribe to the channel uh, to cover your syllabus of logical reasoning and data interpretation for MBA and test exams and also please share it with all of your friends. Thank you so much for watching this video. LRDA Smear is my referral code which you can use to get 10% off on an Academy Plus subscription and this will give you uh, an excess of unlimited access of all live classes which are happening on an Academy Plus including all of my live sessions also and you will also get 10% off. Thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you.